And one point to note is, and this deserves an entirely separate video, is the Ash'aris and Maturidis, who believe in what Hamza Yusuf is saying, are very famous for doing istighatha, or actually calling out to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to calling out to uh, the prophets, for example, to calling out to uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which we believe is completely goes against the text, and this is a whole nother topic. But notice why this might be, and this is a hypothesis. When you have the position of somebody like Hamza Yusuf, that God is completely distant, he's completely atemporal, astaghfirullah, like a frozen picture, he cannot actually hear and respond to your du'as, your prayers in real time. Well, if that's your conception of God, then you have to create these intermediaries, these saints, these prophet-like, or these prophets, that they are prophets, truly, but you give them abilities that normally we would ascribe to God that can hear and answer your prayers in real time, but because they don't actually believe that about Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, they actually remove that from Him and give it to the prophets and give it to these saints and give it to the awliya of Allah. Because they don't actually properly attribute it to Allah, they attribute it to them and therefore they call out to them. This is truly what the problem is. This is how they result or wind up in this position of istighatha. Bismillah. So here we are once again with another hot take from Jake, the metaphysician of that scene. As we have just heard, Jake has come forward with a new conspiracy theory. What is this conspiracy theory? You know those nut jobs that you've probably heard of online with their wild conspiracy theories, the likes of Amran Hussein, the likes of that guy from America, Infowars. There's another guy in the UK that believes that politicians are lizard people, they're reptiles, and that the moon is a satellite of some sort. Well, Jake wants to outdo them all. He wants to outdo them all with this new conspiracy theory. His theory, he says it's a hypothesis, is that because the Ashairi don't believe that God is in real time, um, then what they have done is they have given the attributes that are deservant of Allah to other than Him, the prophets, the messengers, the awliya, causing them to worship other than Allah from. SubhanAllah, this sounds familiar. Where have I heard these accusations before? Could it maybe be in the works of Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab? It does seem quite familiar. But Jake is presenting it as some sort of breakthrough that he's come to. SubhanAllah. What has caused Jake to make this uh, false accusation? Simply because, once again, Jake, along with the Wahhabis, along with the Taimis, worship a spatial God that is in time. He's in space, he's in place, he's in time. That's the only reason why he comes out with this nonsense. What I hope to do in this video, inshallah, is two things. First of all, since Jake claims to be, falsely claims to be a Maliki, Subhanallah, out of all madahib, he claimed to be a Maliki. Yani you could have got away with maybe a Hanbali, because in the Hanbali madhab, there's been a number of imma that were, that were not on the way of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. You know, you could have hid yourself behind them. But you chose out of all madahib, the most Ash'ari madhab, which is Imam Malik's madhab. Um, so anyways, what I'm going to do, inshallah, is since he's a Maliki, we're going to go back to Imam Malik himself. He's accused us Ash'aris of giving the attributes of Allah to other than Allah to call, uh, and he's accused us of calling on to other than Allah for, for aid. Okay, So we're going to go back to Imam Malik himself and we're going to be quoting him directly and proving Jake wrong and based on his accusation that he's made against us it would mean that Imam Malik himself was a Quburi Ash'ari. Beautiful. So I want you to, first of all, I want you to listen to a clip from a previous recording that I've made on my channel uh, regarding the issue of tawassul, istighatha, and tashaffu. In this clip, inshallah, I'll be reading through a statement directly from Imam Malik that disproves the hypothesis uh, of Jake. Uh, and then after that, we're going to follow it up with another clip. So listen in, inshallah. Final incident that I want to mention to you is an incident that takes place at the time of the great Imam of Medina, 
Al-Imam Malik. This is a famous book by Al-Qadi Iyad known as Al-Shifa. This book, he mentions a very important story that takes place with Sayyiduna Imam Malik and the Khalifa of his, of his time. قال ناظر أبو جعفر أمير المؤمنين مالكا في مسجد رسول الله ذا أمير المؤمنين ذا عباسي خليفة of the time أبو جعفر wanted to debate إمام مالك in the masjid of the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم مسجد المدينة فقال له مالك so Malik said to him when he's saying Abu Ja'far raising his voice in the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to him, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, la tarfa' sawtaka fi hadha al-masjid. O oh, leader of the believers, don't raise your voice in this masjid. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَىٰ أَدَّبَ قَوْمًا فَقَالْ لَا تَرْفَعُوا أَصْوَاتَكُمْ فَوْقَ صَوْتِ النَّبِيِّ وَلَا تَجْهَرُوا لَهُ بِالْقَوْلِ كَجَهْرِ بَعْضِكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ أَن تَحْبَطَ أَعْمَالُكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ For indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala disciplined certain people by saying to them, do not raise your voice over the voice of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And do not raise your voice in calling him out. لَا تَجْهَرُوا لَهُ بِالْقَوْلِ Like you raise your voice with one another. It may be that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroys all of your actions. أن تحبط أعمالكم وأنتم لا تشعرون because you're say, you're showing a lack of uh, adab, a lack of etiquettes and manners with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It might be that Allah subhanahu wa taala wipes away all of your good deeds. And then the Imam continues on. He says, وَمَدَ حَقَوْمًا فَقَالَ and Allah praised a people by saying about them, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَغُضُّونَ أَصْوَاتَهُمْ عِنْدَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُولَئِكَ الَّذِينَ امْتَحَنَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَهُمْ لِلتَّقْوَى لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَأَجْرٌ عَظِيمٌ Indeed, those that lower their voices in the presence of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it is these people that Allah subhanahu wa taala has placed taqwa in their hearts, he has purified their hearts, and for them is forgiveness and a great reward with Allah subhanahu wa taala. So that's the advice that Imam Malik gave him. Did it end there? No. فَاسْتَكَانَ لَهَا أَبُو جَعْفَرَ So Abu Ja'far took the advice on and he calmed down in his conversation with Imam Malik. وَقَالَ يَا أَبَا عَبْدِ اللَّهِ then Abu Ja'far asked Imam Malik, he said, Ya Aba Abdullah, A'astakbilu al-qiblata wa ad'u am astakbilu Rasulullah wa ad'u? O oh, Imam Malik, when I make dua in the presence of the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what should I do? Should I face the grave or should I face the qibla? What do you guys reckon is going to be the answer? If you ask these guys, these Najdi sect and its adherents, they'll say, no, nah, you have to face the qibla. If you face the grave, then it's a bid'ah. Yeah, then you start, it will lead you, to you worshipping Rasulullah. It's a wasila to shirk to the end of the false accusations. Look at the advice of Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala. فَقَالْ وَلِمَ تَصْرِفُ وَجْهَكَ عَنْهُ وَهُوَ وَسِيلَتُكَ وَوَسِيلَةُ أَبِيكَ آدَمَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ إِلَى اللَّهِ تَعَلَى يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ How can you turn your face away from Rasulullah when he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is your wasila? is your means to Allah, and your father's means Adam alayhi salam to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Day of Judgment. بَلْ إِسْتَقْبِلْهُ وَاسْتَشْفِعْ بِهِ فَيُشَفِّعْهُ اللَّهِ Rather, face him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and ask him for shafa'a on your behalf. For indeed, Allah will accept his shafa'a on your behalf. قال الله تعالى وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ جَاءُوكَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا اللَّهِ وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمُ الرَّسُولِ لَوَجَدُوا اللَّهَ تَوَّابَ الرَّحِيمَ Then the Imam Malik uses as proof the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from Surah An-Nisa that if only when they were to wrong themselves, they came to you, Ya Rasulullah, and they sought forgiveness from Allah, and you sought forgiveness on their behalf, then they would have found Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be repentant upon them, merciful towards them. Rahimahullah ta'ala wa radiya anhu wa anna bihi. As we have just heard, Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala had no issue with facing the grave of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wa salam had no issue with raising your hands in dua facing the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He had no issue in using Rasulullah as your wasila, as your means to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He had no issue with tashaffu' asking him for shafa'a. Wal yatashaffa' bihi, to take him as your shafi'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the question to Jake and by extension to the Najdi Salafis out there, is was Imam Malik a Ash'ari Quburi? Was he calling upon other than Allah in Ibadah? Did he give the attributes of Allah to the Prophet? Please inform us. We await your reply. Moving on to the second point that I want to make in this video, which is that this hot take that Jake has put together, this hypothesis that he's come to, 
It's not new to the Najdi Salafi movement. It's actually quite common. Akabir, their great scholars, think the same way. Anyone that's familiar with the Arab Salafi Mashaykh would know Mustafa al Adawi. He's a respected figure among them. He's a reference point. They ask him for fatwa. They see him as a great muhaddith at the end of it. He himself was once asked about the tawassul and the tashafu' that's found in the works of the likes of Imam al Nawawi, Imam ibn Hajar, Imam ibn Qudama al Hanbali. Um, and you know what he said? Again, conspiracy theories. He said, oh, yeah, this is from the Shia Fatimids. They supported these types of actions. And unfortunately, these Imams, they erred in what they have mentioned in their books. So the following clip I want you to hear is of Mustafa Al-Adawi stating what I just mentioned. And then, inshallah, I'll be following it up with some scans from Imam and Nawawi's works and Ibn Qudama's works proving that they were in approval of what these guys consider as giving the sifat of Allah to the creation of Allah, worshipping other than Allah, shirk akbar, to the end of it. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide these people back to the way of our scholars, back to the way of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and our families and our children from such deviancies. Wallahu a'lam. Walau annahum izzalamu anfusahum jawuk fi hayatihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wallahu a'lam. Allah yakim. Wal Nawawi wa Ibn Qudama aydan zakaru nafsul kisayana. المشكلة أن النووي لم يتعقبها قال مستحسنين لذلك أي أقول لك النووي المشكلة ما هذا الذي ينم عني عن منهج النووي ولذلك النووي مع إمامته وفضله وعلمه لكن يتحفظ عليه في أمرين الصفات والتصوفات فهذان الأمران مأخوذان على الإمام النووي وعلى الإمام ابن حجر رحمة الله عليهما غفر الله لهما ابن قدامة نفسه أيضا وابن قدامة أكثر اللي أكثر والدولة الفاطمية قوت هذا وعززته الله يكرم